One of the most hotly contested debates in the PC building world is whether you should use air cooling or liquid cooling. There are many different air coolers and liquid coolers you could compare, but what if you want the ultimate solution? What if you want the very best CPU cooler and can't decide between air or liquid? That's the question this video aims to solve. This video isn't about budget solutions or just good enough coolers. This video is about the ultimate cooler. Which one is the very best? With that in mind, I've chosen what I think are the best coolers on the market right now in their respective categories. The Noctua NHD15 for air cooling and the NZXT Kraken X72 for liquid cooling. With these two titans going up against each other, who will win? Let's test them out and see. The first and by far easiest category to compare these coolers on is price. The NHD15 sells for $90 while the Kraken X72 sells for $162. Easy win for the air cooler in the price category. While the NHD15 is one of the most expensive air coolers, it's still almost half the price of the high-end liquid cooler we're comparing it to. But is there a reason why the air cooler is so much cheaper? Let's dig further into a deeper analysis of each cooler. Installation is quite different for each cooler. For the NHD15, first you install the backplate and motherboard mounting parts, then put some thermal paste on your CPU, then screw the cooler onto the motherboard, then install the fan clips and plug the fans in. For the Kraken X72, you first install the backplate onto the back of the motherboard, then put the standoffs onto the front of the motherboard, then put some thermal paste on your CPU, if you've already used the pre-applied thermal paste like I did, then screw the pump to the standoffs, then plug in all of the many connectors needed to get the fans and pumps working, then screw the fans and the radiator into the case. Lastly, you need to install NZXT's CAM software to control the liquid cooler's pump speed, fan speeds, and lights. As you can see, the NHD15's installation is much simpler, easier, and quicker. The NHD15 requires just six screws total, while the Kraken X72 requires 16 screws for front installation and 28 screws for top installation. The NHD15 requires three cables to be plugged in, while the Kraken X72 requires eight different cables to be plugged in. The NHD15 requires no software, while the Kraken X72 requires software to be installed for it to function. Overall, a very clear win for the NHD15 in the installation category. It's just much simpler and faster to install. The NHD15 and the Kraken X72 are both relatively large coolers in their respective categories. So how many systems are they going to fit in? I turned to PC Part Picker to determine how well each cooler would be compatible with other parts. The NHD15 is compatible with about 2600 motherboards, while the Kraken X72 is compatible with about 2700 motherboards. Almost a tie in the motherboard compatibility department. The NHD15 is compatible with about 2500 cases, while the Kraken X72 is compatible with about 700 cases. Here we can see the problem with the 360mm radiator on the Kraken X72. It's huge. There just aren't very many cases that will fit it. However, will this huge radiator give it an advantage over the NHD15 in performance? We'll find out later in this video. The NHD15 has 32mm of RAM clearance, while the Kraken X72 has 35mm of RAM clearance. Pretty close one here, but the Kraken X72 has the advantage in RAM compatibility. Overall, I'd say the NHD15 is the winner in the compatibility department, mainly due to fitting in way more cases. While the Kraken X72 may be compatible with slightly more motherboards and have slightly better RAM clearance, the NHD15 has a huge, more than three times advantage in number of compatible cases, giving it the overall compatibility win. Noctua says the NHD15 consumes about 3 watts power total, while NZXT says the Kraken X72 consumes about 18 watts power total. Easy win for the NHD15 and power consumption, mainly due to not having to run a pump, no lighting, and having fewer fans. Looks have become more and more important in the custom PC building world, as people not only want high performing parts, they also want them to look good. The approach to looks couldn't be more different in our two coolers compared today. The NHD15 is basically just a huge chunk of metal with some brown fans attached to it. Noctua is all about function over form. It does look classy in its own way, but it has no RGB lighting and no customizability. 
It also covers up a huge portion of your motherboard, blocking your RAM and other parts from view. The brown fans on the NHD15 can be a major aesthetic issue for some. They are very hard to color match with the rest of the parts in your system. The Kraken X72, on the other hand, is all about the RGB. It has a neat customizable lighted logo on the front of the pump, which can be modified using its CAM software. There are a ton of different effects and colors you can choose from in the software, letting you customize the lighting to whatever you'd like. The Kraken X72 also takes up very little space in the main part of the case, letting you show off the rest of your parts, like your RAM. This gives it a nice clean look as well. Overall, a pretty clear win for the Kraken X72 in the aesthetics department. It has a great clean design, customizable lights, and overall you can tell they put a lot of thought into how it looks. Now to get to what you've all been waiting for, the performance benchmarks. I tested these two coolers using a 125 watt CPU heat load at five different fan and pump speeds to see how they performed over the full range of their capability. I measured noise and temperatures, then graphed the results. I also tested the Kraken X72 in two configurations. One where it is placed at the front of the case and one where it is placed at the top of the case. It's important to note in these graphs that lower is better. We want lower temperatures and lower noise. So the lines that are lowest and to the left are the best. Starting at the lowest fan speeds, we can see that the NHC15 is much hotter than the Kraken X72 in both of its configurations. The NHC15 does have a slightly lower noise floor though, which means it can get slightly quieter during low loads. Around medium fan speeds, we can see that the NHD15 is still running hotter, but not by nearly as much, only about a 2.5 degree difference. At high fan speeds, the NHD15 stops at a relatively low noise level, while the Kraken X72 continues to produce more and more noise without much drop in temperature. Overall, this is a pretty clear win for the Kraken X72 in performance, except perhaps at high fan speeds where it produces too much noise. However, this isn't the only test I did. I also did a test using a 125 watt CPU heat load, along with about a 135 watt GPU heat load. This allowed me to see how the CPU coolers affected GPU temperatures and vice versa, which can be very important if you're using an application that uses both your GPU and your CPU, such as games. This produced some very interesting results. First off, here is the GPU temperature graph. Here we can see the NHD15 has the best GPU temperature to noise curve out of all of them. This is likely due to the Kraken X72 heating up the GPU with its radiator when it's at the front and replacing proper fan airflow when it's at the top. The Kraken X72 top configuration does produce much better GPU results though than the front configuration. So I would recommend putting it at the top of your case if you're a gamer. It also produces even lower GPU temps than the NHD15 at high fan speeds, but it's not really worth going that loud just to get your GPU temps down a few degrees. Now here is the CPU temperature only graph when we are using the GPU load. These results are pretty similar to our original CPU only graph, except the front configuration is performing much better than the top configuration. The NHD15 is definitely getting outclassed here. It seems that for CPU temps alone, the Kraken X72 is definitely superior. And now for our final and probably most interesting graph, combined CPU and GPU temperatures. Here we can see both coolers and configurations perform very similarly. The NHD15 performs hotter at lower fan speeds, but joins the rest of the pack as fan speeds increase and performs almost identically to both Kraken X72 configurations around middle fan speeds. As we get to high fan speeds, the Kraken X72 configs start producing lower temperatures at the cost of greatly increased noise, while the NHD15 just stops at a much lower noise level but cannot reduce temps further. Overall, I'd say the Kraken X72 wins for combined CPU and GPU temps, but not by much. It's very close. So with all these results taken into account, who wins in performance? It's pretty clear the Kraken X72 comes out on top. While the NHD15 gets close, it just cannot handle the raw CPU cooling performance of the Kraken X72. When we take GPU temps into account as well, the NHD15 performs excellently, even besting the Kraken X72 on GPU temps alone. But then when you take into account the combined GPU and CPU temps, it still loses. So the Kraken X72 takes the performance crown. 
Now for our final comparison category, warranty, maintenance, and safety. Both the NHD15 and the Kraken X72 have six year warranties, so a tie there. Maintenance for both coolers is similar, just blowing dust out of them every once in a while as it builds up. However, the large size of the NHD15 can affect the maintenance of your other parts. It's so big that it makes it harder to upgrade your RAM and get to your other parts on your motherboard, like your M.2 slot. So a small win for the Kraken X72 there, which allows full access to your parts. There are almost no safety issues with either cooler, except the Kraken X72 does have a small chance of a liquid leak. It's very rare though, and NZXT does cover any damages caused by leaks, but that's a small win for the NHD15. Overall, I'd say it's a tie between the two coolers for warranty, maintenance, and safety. While it's easier to maintain your other parts with the Kraken X72, it also has a very small risk of leakage, so it ends up in a tie with the NHD15. Now let's tally up the scores and get to the conclusion of this comparison. What is the ultimate CPU cooler, the NHD15 or the Kraken X72? We can see that NHD15 has won four categories, while the Kraken X72 has won two categories. So just point-wise, it looks like the NHD15 is the overall winner. The NHD15 is almost half the price of the Kraken X72. It's way easier to install, it's compatible with more parts, consumes less power, and almost reaches the performance level of the Kraken X72. It looks like the NHD15 is the reasonable choice for most people. But what if you aren't a reasonable person? What if all you care about is performance and looks? and you're willing to spend a lot of money, time, and power just to get it, then you're an enthusiast, and the Kraken X72 is going to be my enthusiast choice. It's pricey and difficult, but when you finally get it up and running, it works great. Another plus for enthusiasts is the small motherboard footprint of the Kraken X72 makes it easier to upgrade and tinker with the rest of your parts, which is something enthusiasts are doing all the time. Overall, when it comes down to it, both of these coolers are great. They each won in different categories and will provide a great high-end cooling experience for different use cases. The NHD15 for most people who want a high-end CPU cooling solution, and the Kraken X72 for the enthusiasts who are willing to deal with the downsides of liquid cooling in return for the highest performance and looks. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to see more computer part reviews coming soon. Also, share this video on Reddit, forums, Twitter, and other social media. I'm a new YouTuber, so every share helps a lot. See you next time.